This segment right here is actually going to be one of the most difficult, probably the most difficult segment of the entire training course for me to produce. Um, and you might think that that's why I put it in the beginning so that I could just knock it out and get it out of the way, move on to the, the this topics that I find more easier to deal with and that I'm more comfortable with. But, and the reason why this is so difficult for me is because I'm gonna get into a little bit about my personal story uh, as well as my business career story. And sometimes those two, a lot of times those two have intersected. <laughs> um, and in my personal history and my personal story is a lot of pain. And, uh, and it's all, you know, I, I took a very long time to get to where I'm at now, and I do realize that I'm living a success story and a comeback story, and that's what America loves. <laughs> but it's very important to me to be authentic and upfront and always, you know, just always giving you advice that I truly believe and not have agendas. And, it, and it's important to me not to be you know, superficial, so to speak. I want to be real with you and not just be, you know, someone that you see on the surface. You know, what you see is what you get. And what you do see is a, a man who has about 20 years in this, you know, of experience in this industry, in the insurance restoration industry. And the journey that I took to get to where I'm at now has been one fraught with disaster. <laughs> and you know, at, at times, you know, just falling flat on my face. And, and I think that that's one of the big reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing now is because in my life, you know, I, at, at first, you know, I, I come from a, a wonderful family who I love and uh, my grandfather was a minister. And, and so, you know, to some degree, I was raised in the church, not, not so much, active uh, involvement from my parents in the church, but uh, my parents were divorced when, when I was about 14. And um, they, you know, there was, it was a, sort of a broken home before that, a lot of fighting and alcoholism and other things that, are, that were going on. Um, but it, that was one of my, you know, most crucial times of my life, as it is, I'm sure, with most teenagers, uh, 14 years old. Uh, it was a time when I was becoming, I thought, a man, <laughs> and I was going through a lot of physical changes and, you know, very emotional, and it, it just was a was the worst time, you know, and because so much attention was given to that negative that negativity uh, at my home, there wasn't a lot of direction given to me about, you know, pl plans preparing and planning ahead for college and and for what my career was going to be you know it, it was uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, preparation done uh, as far as finances and credit and a lot of those things and I didn't really uh, know what I was going to do and so at 17 I got a sales job, and uh, it was a door, you know, I first started out with door-to-door -door with Kirby, which didn't last long, you know, but, but the sales job that I did get into was a relief from Kirby. I, found, I was like, wow, I can do this. And uh, to make a, a long story short there, you know, I made about $52,000 when I was 17, and so the idea of going straight into college was not uh, I didn't seem ideal to me. It was, you know, I was a part of a, a, a company, a part of a team, and uh, and you know, setting goals and accomplishing those goals. My boss at the time was a, it was an incredible mentor to me. I learned a lot of, uh, you know, good stuff from him. Um, but I just figured I would take a year off college, you know, and then go and do that proverbial year, year off, take a year off. I wasn't, I wasn't very good in school all through childhood. I was uh, extremely intelligent and bright, and they always said, you know, he, he is so, you know, bright, and if he would only just live up to his potential, you know, uh, and that was because uh, I had a hard time with, with schoolwork and um, 
homework and you know just doing the preparation that it took you know book reports I'm staying up all night the night before and still smashing it <laughs> but thinking I could have done so much better if I actually you know prepared like the rest of the class um, I wanted a lot of attention you know uh, go figure um, you know I, I was like the class clown and 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 was was always seeking attention sometimes in the bad and bad ways um, and just didn't excel in, in my schoolwork. And come middle school and high school, I'm you know, trying to figure out ways to skip school and do other things. You know? so, so I just, I wasn't very good in school. Um, and so the idea of going to college was just <laughs> something that wasn't ideal to me. I, was, I just wanted to be done with that. I'm like, what do I need school for? I can make you know, big money and I'm, I'll be able to make hundreds of thousands of dollars later. Um, so, but I did try. I went to school for about a semester and failed miserably. <laughs> you know, it was uh, the idea that in college that that you could just show up on the day of the exam, and no one will know if you did, if you showed up or not in in you know day to day classes was you know had a lot of uh, uh, cl classes in my schedule like that, and so I didn't do well at that. <laughs> you know you can you figure out what happened there. I didn't want to be there, so uh, but it wasn't the same as in high school. It was much more difficult to pass those exams if I didn't show up for me anyway. Um, so you know I was. Um, had a lot of misdirection, and I, I got into trouble with the law at, a, at about age 19. And um, without getting into you know, that whole uh, part of my life, I just needed to get it out there that I have that in my history. And that followed me for many years thereafter, you know, and it was a burden as far as getting employment from there and in certain types of businesses and certain types of professions, um, it was not uh, possible for me. So I spent a lot of time trying to prove people wrong to this day. I still try to prove people wrong, you know, that's the chip I have on my shoulder. Um, I've been called many things. I've been called a criminal and I've been called a crook and I've been called a loser and I've been called a failure and I've been called just many, many other things that are, uh, you know, just, just uh, the worst things you want people to say about you. Um, and especially, you know, after you're gone, you don't want people to, to speak about you, you know, like he, he lived a long life, but he was this and he was that and, and good riddance, you know, um, because I, th I, don't, I don't think I ever believed those things about myself. And I believe that I had a lot more potential, like they always told me. And I, I didn't see myself as, you know, someone that wanted to be entangled with the law all my life. And so I wanted to make a turnaround, and I did. But unfortunately, you know, for years and still to this day, people are very, very quick to pull that up and to use it against you. And so it was harder for me to choose a career path. I was also very entrepreneurial because of the experience I had when I was 17. And, you know, and, it was, and, and I ultimately blew that opportunity and, and when I got in trouble and uh, blew a lot of other opportunities. And, um, you know, there went the college idea. I played football and basketball and was athletic in uh, high school, barely, barely passed uh, because of my grades. But I really wanted to do that, you know, and, and wish that I would have. It was a regret, you know, that I had and, 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 and didn't because I messed up my life, you know, at a young age. So, but anyway, moving forward from there, um, one of the, you know, the biggest blessings of my life is that uh, God sent me a, the most incredible woman on the planet um, at, you know, at a very young age. And she didn't see me for all those things either. And she saw me as a winner and she saw me as like her prince, you know, and those kinds of things. And um, swept her off her feet kind of thing. She swept me off my feet. I didn't think I was going to get married until I was like in my 60s. Um, <laughs> I was notoriously single. But, uh, and so was she. But uh, that really saved my life. You know, I, I met her and uh, 
we got married pretty quickly, uh, just barely in our early 20s, around the time of the uh, millennium. And around that time is uh, when I started out in, the, in this industry. I got a job uh, for, a, for a roofing company in, in my uh, area where I'm from in Ohio. And um, they had a hailstorm there. And I noticed there's signs everywhere all throughout the city, you know, and I had never heard of them before, but I didn't really follow roofing. I was uh, in and out of landscaping at the time. I started my own landscaping company, um, you know, and I was, I was a hard worker too. I would go out there and uh, try to work circles around the guys that worked for me, you know, to show them that I could work harder than all of them. Um, but I didn't have any construction background at all, no roofing or anything like that. Um, none whatsoever. I mean, landscaping, the, the, the closest I ever came really to construction was in landscaping, uh, building a retaining wall or a paver patio or maybe a deck, you know. So, and of course, I wasn't building the deck because I wasn't a very good carpenter. Never have been, never will be. <laughs> Let's just uh, be honest about that, too. So, but I got into the, um, uh, responded to the ad I saw in the paper. Uh, more than anything, I was so blown away by their marketing. I was like, how did they just go from nobody's ever heard of them to everybody, like they're on every, they're everywhere, you know? And they were one of those storm chasing operations and they were on a big kick and uh, hit the ground running right away. And I didn't know anything about hail, like probably a lot of you. I didn't know that hail would do that kind of damage. Um, I don't think I'd ever even seen a hailstorm before at that point. Uh, it was like, are you serious? You know, yeah, hailstorm and hit the roof and uh, the insurance company buys a whole new roof. And I'm like, well, what does something like that cost? What's a roof like? Oh man, you know, it could be five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Like, hmm, really? Uh, that's a, that's a lot easier to sell than a than a mulch job with landscaping, you know? Like, I, I, I'm sure I can do that. Like, these are the same, this is my same, this is my market, like homeowners, you know? Like, like I work with these people all the time, half for years, so, uh, you know, jumped into that. And I thought I'd be really, really good at it because it seemed like such a, an easy concept. Like, you know, you pay the deductible and everything else is paid for. Like, that seemed to me like an, like an easy sell. And I wish I could say that I got into it and excelled right away, but I just didn't. I, I really, really struggled. You know, I didn't, I remember, I didn't know what a ridge cap was. I didn't know what a ridge was, hips. Got those confused, rakes and eaves. I definitely got those confused. Um, you know, I knew what the valley was. <laughs> you know, that was an easy one to remember. But all the other stuff, I just, I really had a hard time with it. And it was confusing to me that as far as how much the stuff was supposed to cost, you know, they give you uh, like a like a spreadsheet. And if it was State Farm, you charge this much. And if it was Allstate, you charge this much. And that just didn't make any sense to me because I, I, I got to, you know, started looking at the insurance estimates. And of course, you know, in hindsight, they were Xactimate reports that I was looking at even back then. And on these estimates, it, you know, I see the price to remove and replace shingles is different for this estimate here than it is over here. And by the way, they're both State Farm. That just didn't make any sense. And, and, but yet, in some cases, the State Farm price matched the Allstate. And so it was just so, so confusing. Uh, and I, I, I wouldn't, of course, find out about Xactimate until later where, where that would all make sense. But because of things like that, you know, I need to understand the whys behind it. And, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of training available for that job. Like I'm sure a lot of the, a lot of you folks and jobs you've had in this industry where it's like you show up and, okay, you go ride with this guy and watch everything he does and then you'll be, you know, eventually you'll be ready to go out on your own. Um, it, was just, it ended up being me riding with another guy who he was new too and he was supposed to learn from me. So we were supposed to try to learn from each other. It was really crazy. So I didn't do very well. I was in and out of that, uh, you know, of the industry early on and didn't really uh, get, get back into it until 2004 um, when one of my friends who was dating my wife's best friend at the time was a roofing subcontractor and we went out to dinner with him and my wife's friend uh, one night and he had been down in Florida working and was back in town for the weekend and so he was telling us about uh, what he was doing down there and they just it was at the end of 2004 and hurricanes uh, Charlie, Jean, Francis and Ivan just hit Florida and it sort of tore down the middle of it. And so, you know, from Orlando 
all the way down. Like I think it hit, one of them hit really bad in, in the Port Charlotte area. So a lot of areas in Florida were really effective. It was widespread damage. And he knew that I used to work, you know, in the roofing sales. And one of the companies that he was working for was, you know, asking if anybody knew, you know, they need sales guys bad. And so he was like, look, you know, you're going to go down there and make a million dollars. You'll just do amazing. You know, I, I mean, up on the, I'm, I'm up on a ladder and people are coming up and pulling on my leg like, please come over and sign me up and give me a new roof. But there are these licenses and I can't do that. I'm just a sub and man, you just got to come down. You got to come down. And so I did <laughs> pretty quickly. I remember it was uh, in the beginning or middle of November 2004 and I took basically all the money I had, which wasn't much, and uh, drove down to Florida and my wife stayed at home and I was like, baby, you know, Thanksgiving was coming up and I remember her birthday was gonna be around that time. And so the plan was, I'm gonna, you know, make enough money to be able to come back home by Thanksgiving or get you to Florida, you know, and we'll spend some time there. And uh, barely pulled that off, I did. You know, I went there and worked with the company that he got me with was a complete joke. Uh, but I did go and make sales, you know, I, I remember, I went out and knocked on doors, and the third door I knocked on was this, this Japanese guy who had a Japanese restaurant around the street, around the corner, and uh, signed him up, got a check for half, went back to the company, got them to get me a check, and went did more. Uh, and that grew you know, pretty quickly, and I worked for maybe, uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 different contractors during, that, during a short period of time. And the reason why so many, one, again, I'm unemployable, like I'm, entrepreneurial, so I'm always looking for a different way. I'm always looking for a way to do it myself, you know? Um, but, and I've always been that way, so, and, it, and it's it, 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 more so than, than most that I've noticed or, you know, that I've ever come into contact with. And so I was studying on one hand, but on the other hand, I just didn't, we had, I had disagreements with everybody I worked with, you know, they either wouldn't pay me or ways that they were doing it I thought was crazy or, you know, they weren't getting guys to do, you know, the jobs were stacking up and not getting done. And so eventually, I was with one company where um, uh, they, I was just sort of helping this entrepreneur who'd never been in the business sort of run it for the licensed guy and he figured I could help him run it only because I'd worked for all these other companies and so I, I did that for a while and and you know helped him out a ton and during that time I discovered that I could get Xactimate myself and I contacted Xactware and they sent me at the time you had to get it on a disc and they sent it to me and I, I remember waiting in the, in, you know for that thing to come in the mail I was so excited because Xactware was telling me, yeah, contractors with you, we have training and all of that. And so I got the disc and got plugged it in and learned, you know, as fast as possible. But really, most, I mostly learned from what I was seeing on the insurance reports on, on those estimates. I was seeing how the estimates were structured by the insurance company. And, and, and then that enabled me to be able to see what they weren't putting in. And so I would write my version of the estimate way back then in 2000, probably five at that point, um, and, and submit it and would win. You know, I would submit documentation and would win, you know, lots of money, a uh, lot higher approvals. And so I, I discovered that I had a knack from that er, for that early on, and so did other people. Uh, I eventually went to work for another company, a big outfit, and they had me writing estimates for all their sales guys. So I would go out and do inspections on all the jobs that they sold and would do all the estimates. And then uh, at one point, you know, they, were, they weren't getting jobs done, people were losing money, con uh, clients were getting upset, uh, sales, sales guys were running off, and I discovered that they were basically gonna fold up and these four clients, is more than that, but ended up being four uh, homeowners were basically going to get screwed over. And so at that point, I found a licensed contractor and you know got with him and formed an uh, a, a, a entity together and went and convinced all four of the you know in my 20s, all four of these homeowners that you know things were not going to be good with that company. But if if they still trusted me and believed in me, I was gonna be with this great contractor and we were still gonna get all their work done. And based on everything that I've done with the insurance company, you know that I'm gonna get all the insurance stuff right. And it worked out, all four of them, uh, we, we were gonna to go to six or eight, but four of them 
uh, you know, some in their living rooms and at dining room tables agreed to hire me and gave me a check up front. And we did all those jobs and, you know, the rest was uh, sort of history for a little while. You know, we uh, started doing a lot of work in the Central Florida area, made a lot of money, and then Hurricane Wilma hit, really Katrina hit first, hit the uh, south part of Florida before it went over to New Orleans. I was thinking about going to New Orleans. I'm so glad I didn't uh, in hindsight. But Wilma then hit, uh, I think it was October 2005, hit uh, South Florida. So you have Broward County, uh, 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 Miami-Dade County, Palm Beach County, which is one of the wealthiest you know, counties in America. And just widespread, massive hurricane damage. It's one of the top ranked, uh, costliest storms in the history of, in, of this country still to this day. And uh, you know, did a ton of work in that and made a lot of money um, and had a whole bunch of people working. But again, just learning, learning, learning uh, and making mistakes and bad business deals and you know falling on my face and people always during disagreements trying to use the past against me, uh, extorting me, things like that. And um, you know, but learned a lot, did a lot. I mean, because to be able to even pull permits in, in Miami and to be able to even get through those jobs was really something else. And um, you know, it, it was one of the most trying times in, of my career, but got, got through that. Uh, and in hindsight, I would have done much better had I have known that there would be no hurricanes of any significance for another 12 years. And there was supposed to be one every single year. You know, there was like, hurricane shutter companies starting up and different like hurricane type uh, companies you know starting up it was going to be a major hurricane every year thereafter and so we just thought it was going to go like that forever you know and and if, if i would have known that it wouldn't i would have made different financial decisions obviously um, but i was depending on mother nature and not knowing really a whole lot about the hail and wind other than hurricanes. Hurricanes became my game. And when they stopped, you know, and then came the, uh, the real estate crisis of around that, you know, 2006, 2007, 2008, whew, it was just like bad, bad, bad. You know, everything I had built up was lost. And then I became, you know, starving for work and even, even retail construction slowed to a halt. Um, and there was, there was, I wasn't working water and fire yet at that point at all. And so I didn't have my hands in that. If I was, then I could have probably gotten through that. Um, so th there for a while, it was just like I was, it was there in Florida starving, you know, just like withering away and dying, you know. And then came Hurricane Ike in 2008 and like sort of saved me, you know, and uh, I moved to Texas and eventually made my way into Dallas and, and, and because I got into water and fire. And so settled my, my wife and me and dogs into Dallas and, um, fit, you know, was in the Hurricane Ike for a year or so and did a lot of projects in that but really wanted to stop relying on mother nature because I had a daughter on the way, you know, around, around this time. And so I, we settled in Dallas. It's one of the reasons why we wanted to settle there and had some friends there and uh, that we were close with, but settled in Dallas and expanded my general contracting business into water and fire. Um, so, you know, and at this point I figured, you know, there's uh, 700 plus or I'm sorry, 7 million plus folks that live in the greater Dallas Metroplex. And there's, there's you know, extensive amounts of water and fire claims that happen every single day. And I did the research, I saw that there was like maybe 25 different surf pro franchises in the Metroplex. And so I knew that there was, there was a lot in this arena, you know, and, and I got into it initially from the reconstruction side. Just wanted to, you know, and I tried to hook up a lot of surf pro type uh, outfits and plumbers and uh, people like that, that that could get me in after they already did sort of the mitigation stuff and, and folks were, were, were searching for a reconstruction contractor. And uh, that was a good move, you know, getting into uh, fire and water. And, uh, and also more of the hail, you know, no, it was getting off of my addiction to hurricanes, basically. There weren't going to be any hurricanes in Dallas. I knew that. And uh, so I was, you know, uh, really enjoying uh, learning about the 
fire side of it and water and um, you know putting all that back together because if you can do a hurricane buildings are ripped apart so I dealt with all of that I had the knowledge and experience and I thought you know, this is really just the same stuff and it's a it's a little bit different but you know you're, you're not dealing with a roof and water you know but so there's there's a lot of differences to it but it, it, you have a lot of similarities. You know, if you can handle a hurricane, then you should be able to handle a fire or, or a water damage uh, project. And then, you know, the next challenge from there was getting into commercial jobs. And around this time, you know, if if anyone would call, would contact me right when the loss was occurring, like when the water is going on or um, you know the fire just happened. You know, because that was sort of a rarity for me. I was always getting called in after the point, but I started to deal with enough agents and some other folks that knew that I had the experience in working with insurance projects. So naturally, I would start to get calls from you know people that you know it was going on. They were actively in the middle of water, you know, coming into their building. And so what I did at that time was I would subcontract as the general you know, to the, the mitigation companies and get them to come in and stop the bleeding. And they would, you know, I would coordinate with them the estimating on that and I would do the billing. But you know, they did Xactimate too. So it really, they're giving me their Xactimate stuff and I wasn't really making a lot of profit on top of it, you know, and, and, and I was finding that insurance companies were uh, pushing back on giving me even the O and P on these guys. So uh, one time, uh, a guy called. He was a dentist, and he had a second property. It was a condo. Um, he lived in a big house, and he had a condo that was on the market, and it just closed. So, or it was coming up to the closing, I believe. But it was just in a few days. Like, so like so much had been done for you know to get him to this point to where he was getting ready to be rid of this condo that he didn't want anymore and he had remodeled everything and it was nice and uh, his neighbor above him in this condo unit uh, a water heater I think it was leaked all down in, into his unit and water all into the ceilings and hardwood floor just destroyed it and he contacted me and was like you know over the phone was like can you get guys over there now and set up you know equipment like I need people over there now and I was like well you know we have to do paperwork and he's like well listen and, and we got to contact the insurance and he's like look I'll just pay you whatever it takes because I have a closing and if the insurance company doesn't pay you know it's coming for me I said okay you know I just I guess I had a good feeling for it and went and did it but the, the key is I couldn't get a, a mitigation company fast enough or else I was probably going to lose out and it was a small place and I'd seen enough of these mitigation companies you know doing what they were doing and so I found this company that had a warehouse full of equipment you know fans and dehumidifiers and they can even deliver them to all brand new stuff I mean I think it's still there today I think they, this guy still does that like all the best stuff and so I got a couple of fans and some dehumidifiers and went out there and got some guys out to tear up the wet stuff and eventually met with his insurance company, it was Allstate, I still remember it was like a $27,000 approval. They approved it and then they just dealt with the, the neighbor's insurance company. So got the reconstruction, all that. I remember that being the gateway for me to getting into the mitigation side of it, you know, and, and handling that instead of subcontracting it out. And so that gave me really, really vital experience in the mitigation side of it as well. And so I became sort of a one-stop shop where you know I would handle everything. And I would try to make it like a concierge service, you know, to where I really treated my customers like VIPs and get them free upgrades and my hotel membership and, and, and you know just try to do anything that I could to make their lives easy and serve them and you know, uh, more ways than was really necessary, and uh, and and really found a niche in that, you know, and, and enjoyed that a lot. Learned a lot. Um, I again fell on my face on a commercial job. It was about a half a million dollar fire job, where I almost lost everything. Where you know, uh, uh, there was asbestos on a on uh, the drywall, and just to make a long story short. And we couldn't open up the drywall on the bottom floor to start you know, ripping out the wet drywall that was caused from the firefighters above where the fire was because it had asbestos. We had to go through the uh, asbestos uh, abatement and remediation, taking out the drywall, 
which took like a month to even get to that point. During that month process, we got you know the insurance company out and agreed on scope of repairs and numbers and all that. Money was flowing, and I remember the the mortgage company was cool too. Like uh, we got the insurance checks. FedEx them to the mortgage company, and the mortgage company actually wired the money in. So it was it was, it was a super good situation. But uh, we we got when we ripped out the drywall after the asbestos was out, um, we discovered that the floors were destroyed, and and all of the interior framing above were on top of that flooring system. And because because of the way it was built, it was extensive. Like all the you know a lot more framing had to be done, flooring and all that got the adjuster out and he agreed to all of it and we agreed to an we, he wrote up an estimate we wrote up estimates and agreed to them and uh, he got a payment started and I because of everything that happened before that I knew that the money was flowing and so I invested hundreds of thousands <laughs> into just going forward with the work until the money came well that property owner I didn't know it at the time because I didn't do dil due diligence like I should have but was underwater on his mortgage and had a clause in his in, in, in his mortgage where he could take the in, any insurance proceeds on a claim and apply it to the mortgage instead of you know having the work done. He also had a clause that said that if he had a lien that he didn't cure, then that could they could bring up the loan. Um, and I relied on that and went after him, and it didn't really work. You know, filed a lien, filed a lawsuit. It tr drug out in court for years, and just really wasted a lot of money. You know, going through that. But that was a major thing that almost crushed me. Also, um, you know, where where I was doing so well in fire and water, then came a big hailstorm in Dallas, and it was like you know open season, and I got into that and. Um, made some bad business deals with some guys uh, who were going to be my exclusive subs and labor materials and uh, things didn't work out. Like we had disagreements and they hit the panic button and you know, of course they're digging up dirt on me to use against me and they used that to go and expose me, you know, going to expose you. and. T tell all my clients and and people that I were connected with in the industry, my the people that worked for me, and you know like a like a years old mugshot in their hands. Um, so <laughs> there's that that I you know like I said went up against many times. But during this time, I was um, I'll have to put up a photo so you can see what I looked like. I was about 85 pounds heavier than I am right now. I had high blood pressure. Um, I was not happy. I really wasn't. I, you know, the I went so so all in for my customers, and I, and I think you know, the idea that they still didn't appreciate it. <laughs> you know, they really don't. You know, they like homeowners really don't appreciate this stuff. Most of them. You know, you go through everything, and, and it's hard to even sleep um, with the littlest, you know, smallest little details that you feel like maybe they're uncomfortable about. You want to go overboard to serve them and, and and I have this overwhelming again that chip on my shoulder to prove myself and to prove that I'm a good guy you know I'm not I'm not <laughs> bad I'm a good guy and that's uh, something I've had to improve at you know and not being that way and just being myself you know but but I, just, I was just really stressed out by the production and the non-stop grind of it all I really really enjoyed you know the the science behind the marketing the sales and the production and all that um, but more from an aerial perspective. And the day in, the front line in the trenches stuff was killing me because I, you know, had to, I was a perfectionist and I'd have to make sure I did everything myself and just a really bad delegator. I think to this day, I'm not the best delegator, you know, if I'm just really being honest. And I'm just not really, you know, I've tried to uh, scale my estimating company, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but I'm just not very good at it, you know. I'm, I'm not good at uh, just uh, you know, trying to duplicate myself and get other people to try to be, you know, to, to work like I would, you know. I'm, I'm just really, uh, I struggle with that, always have. You know, it's like uh, you, I'm a, I tried to be a good planner, just good strategy guy. It's like you set, you know, as a contractor, you set out your schedule for the next day uh, and you have it all mapped out hour by hour and all the things that you're going to get accomplished and by 7 a.m. the next morning everything's trashed <laughs> you know the schedule there's the, ne the next like fire that you have and really 
it is like you're, you become a firefighter. You just put out fires all day long, and that was my life. And um, you know, the production side of it was really hard for me. The the side that I, the stuff that I really enjoyed the most was the inspections, the estimates, and the supplements. You know, I just didn't realize it at the time that those were really my strong suits. You know, not out working with the subs all day and trying to manage those guys and trying to get them to do with what you want them to do and put up with the games and put up the games with the sales people and all of that um, and, and never being good enough and you know trying to make a million promises that you spend you, know, you travel a million miles to try to, to try to keep. You know, it was it was I had high blood pressure and was way overweight and I and my just had a new daughter who and I wasn't able to like you know spend the time with her. Found I was gone all day, and or days, and it just seemed like um, I really had a notion like I was dying, you know, like I was losing my life, like like and it was going quick quickly, and um, really struggled with that. And so the bad business deal with the subs that I sort of subtly mentioned there, um, they kind of came after me, you know, and and. Um, they, they were gonna make me suffer and make me pay. And, and and my mindset at the time was one of weakness. You know, I was, I found that it was difficult to stand up and try to stand up to these guys. They had a lot of resources and financially and attorneys and I'd just been through the attorney thing with the commercial fire thing. It was, it, and I'd already kind of resolved not to go down that route ever again, you know, with litigation, no matter what. Uh, you know, no matter what would happen to me personally. And so I just kind of froze up and um, didn't, didn't uh, face it like I really should have made some mistakes there. But, uh, but ultimately somebody wanted my company and because uh, I had a good uh, BBB and good you know, reputation there um, until that point. And for, for really very cheap, you know, not like I ultimately dreamed that it would be someday. Um, I was able to make an exit, and I was able to get out um, with enough resources, basically, to buy a little bit of time to make my next move. And my next move turned out to be, you know, I, I decided, what do I like the most, you know, and what am I good at? And so naturally, it was the inspections, estimates, and supplements. And so I thought, what, you know, I didn't really want to be around anybody at the time. I was um, just, had just kind of been traumatized through with all the chaos and conflict. And so I wanted to be home with my daughter, you know, and, and watch her actually grow up. And, uh, and I wanted to be kind of like the, so I set up this situation where I'm sort of like the wizard behind the curtain, you know, set up a website, virtual estimating company to where people submitted their data and I turned around estimates and ultimately grew it some and brought in some other people and built out the website, some, you know, a portal and CRM system kind of deal and kind of threw my life into that. But at the time, I was uh, not you know, everything I did was like at overhead and profit. You know, like we have a Twitter account that, I have a Twitter account that started for overhead and profit um, in 2011. And everything we did, all of our posts, even back then was like at overhead profit. You know, started a Facebook business page that didn't do anything or go anywhere, but it was at overhead profit. Like I never posted any pictures of myself. Uh, I never uh, put my name out there. Never, I didn't even have a Facebook personal profile. I had one from a long time ago that I deactivated that had like my friends and family I grew up with and things like that. Um, but I deactivated that. And, and it's, you know, if we're really being honest here, all that is because I was traumatized about putting myself out there and being humiliated again, you know? And uh, it's like just trying to avoid the past, you know, move forward. I've always had this mentality, like I have to be moving forward and, and making forward progress, you know, like on a football team, you know, if you, if you don't score the touchdown, that's one thing, but if you're making that forward progress and every play, then, then everybody's excited, you know? And so I just don't see any value uh, besides learning what I've taken away from the past of living in there because it doesn't, you know, um, it doesn't define me, you know what I mean? It, other than it builds me and 
uh, has prepared me to do more, to be better, and to be stronger. And that, that's been the result I've tried to, tried to focus on. But it, it, I, was, I was scared about, uh, that's really what it was, I was scared about coming out there, you know, get, like get, get my, put myself out there. And so it, everything was at overhead profit. <laughs> But you know, and eventually we built it up to do what I called invoice management. It was handling the supplements, the contact uh, with the carriers and things. But there was something missing that I realized, which was because we weren't going out and physically doing the inspections ourselves, you know, the, and collecting that documentation ourselves. There was only so good that you can do with an estimate. Like an estimate can only be so good. That's what I'm going to cover in this in this training course. And the estimate can only be so good without proper documentation. And then no matter what your estimate looks like, it can only go so far as far as the approval side of things um, with proper documentation. And so I saw that as being a big weakness. Like I felt, again, like I want to do the best thing and be the best, but I figured I could do better you know, if, if we were going to do the doc, you know, the, getting the boots on the ground inspections, which would come later. Um, but I also learned around this time that my business I was not going to be able to grow very far um, you know, in, in, in this day and age without me uh, owning my own story and getting out there and building you know, a brand around this business and also a brand around me. And so what I did was I basically, and this is me being completely honest, you know, but it, I've been public about this. It's out there, you know, the stuff about my past, it's out there. Uh, most of the really big people in our industry know fully well about it, and, 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 I, and I, talk, I try to talk openly about it. Maybe not in the beginning when I first meet you, that offends people. Like, why didn't you tell me that you were, you know, you had a past? Um, that offends people sometimes, but I don't feel uh, it necessary, you know. Uh, you know. One of the things is that the, the, the the stress and the suffering that my wife endured because she never deserved any of it. Me, I did. But my wife never deserved any of the chaos, you know. But she always stuck by me throughout it all and suffered major embarrassment. She was a, uh, uh, an athletic star, you know, from her hometown, the place where we're from. And, uh, you know, and I sort of, if I'm being honest, really embarrassed, you know, really, really just embarrassed the heck out of her. And, but she stuck by me and loved me and believed in me throughout the entire time, even to this day. And um, I, you know, knew that if I was going to get out there publicly, she was always really hesitant about that because of the anytime I get attention, there's always going to be negative attention, and and people will try to you know use my past to destroy things in my life and thus it destroys her life you know so what I did was I built a, a brand you know I, I got out there and decided I was going to build a new brand and I was going to um, go all in with it no matter what anybody ever said and what they ever thought and so what I did was is I essentially stripped off my last name and uh, and I go by my first and my middle name. And so I'm not going to say my, my birth last name here. If you want to be like some of those folks, you can go dig it up. It's out there. <laughs> but uh, and I'm not, you know, yeah, I guess I am a little ashamed, right? Um, I was going to say I'm not ashamed of it, but I guess I am. But, but, but I'm not ashamed of my dad, right? And so that, that's been one of the biggest um, struggles about it. But I built a brand around Chad Michael, and that's my real name. <laughs> and I, I made, you know, done, done it legally and all of that. But, uh, you know, it, it's also out there, you know, people will occasionally bring up the negative side, you know, and the, and the stuff from before. And they'll say, well, why isn't he using his last name, you know? And, and I've, I've, again, been public about it. And uh, it, it's uh, like a celebrity or an author builds a brand, you know, and, or a pen name or a brand. That's what I've chosen to do, you know, and uh, to protect my family and for other reasons. But that's what I've chosen to do. Um, and by the way, the, my real last name is a really goofy name. <laughs> so that's another reason. But, but that's what I've chosen to do. Um, and it's, and it's, I'm not ashamed of 
my story because without my story, I wouldn't be one-tenth of who I am now. And so I just realized that I've got to, got to own that. And I'm, and I'm sorry on, on one sense to bring my story and bring, you know, to try to accomplish that through on camera, you know, with this kind of an opportunity, given that you invested in my training course. And if you didn't know about, you know, that side of things, you know, I'm sorry if I let you down, but I'm not because I am who I am. And I'm, I'm a father, you know, of, of a daughter who's almost nine at this point. And uh, I'm an extremely, you know, a family man. I, she plays soccer and uh, uh, basketball. She's in gymnastics and dance. And she thinks that I'm the greatest thing that ever lived, you know. And I think she is too. Um, but that's who I really am. Um, I'm not a partier. I don't go out and get wasted. I, rarely drink. Um, I'm all the time working. I'm called the practitioner for real, like it's for real. All I do is work to try to build a better future for my family. And um, that's really my number one mission these days is not to be loaded, right? Like that's never been my goal. Maybe it was back then when I was making this irresponsible, terrible, you know, uh, the worst decisions I've made early, early on, I, w I was going for that get rich quick kind of thing, you know. But now I don't even care about getting rich, you know. I, I'm not that I'm against jewelry, jewelry or anything, but I'm pretty modest. I don't wear any jewelry, or I don't have drive fast, expensive cars. I don't travel to Italy. I don't have a boat. Um, and I, and I, hey, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. I think you need to do what makes you, you know, what you love, like what you have a passion for. Like me, my thing is, if I do have, you know, something that maybe I spend money on, is electronics. <laughs> like the cameras and the drones and the devices and things, that, that's, that's really me. I have a passion for that stuff, but, um, but you know, other than that, like I, I, don't, uh, I don't throw my money around, right? Like I'm not, I'm not motivated so much by money. But what money is for me, the way that I view it, is all I want, man, <laughs> and I'm sure many of you are like this, I just want to be free, right? I just want to be free. I, I want to be free to be able to make my own choices with my time and to be able to go where I want, to be able to live where I want, to be able to be with who I want. Um, I just want to be free because I've learned that time is the most valuable asset there is on the planet. It's the thing that is so much more valuable than money. Um, but money is the vehicle that can get you more time. And so I just want to be secure. You know, I want to be stable. I want my family to be stable. I want my daughter to be secure. Uh, I want her to have a future. I want her to be, to have the direction. I want her to have the ability to have me and her mom in her life um, to help her make those decisions and prepare her the way that I wasn't. And really, that's more important to me than anything else in the world, is for her to be properly prepared to make the right decisions so that she doesn't have to learn like I did. Um, but that's what motivates me. And I eventually, it began, you know, I was trying to grow and scale my, my overhead and profit.com uh, virtual estimating company and was finding struggles, you know, the more people and uh, it just it was really difficult to, to scale it. Um, and the, the, the thing standing in the way of that was obviously me. I was the thing getting it, you know, the success, but the thing keeping it from growing. I'm the one always in the way of keeping it from growing. And so, you know, uh, started to put in a different type of a model where we went out to do the boots on the ground inspections. And that's the way it is now. And we, and we cut out the carrier contact side of it for the most part. But the way it is now is we do the boots on the ground inspection, get the documentation the right way so that the estimates can be built the right way. There's not as much need as the, sub, the supplement side of it if you get yourself correctly to that point. And then, but we, we noticed that we would then need to train and consult our clients a lot more to help them and hold their hand through that process. So then it evolved more into a training consulting uh, you know, uh, service in addition to those other uh, 
uh, services that we provided. And, and then that, you know, started to get some speech, speaking engagements and some um, engagements to go and do some custom on-site training. Um, you know, at, and I still do that today. Uh, you know, that's a big part of what I do. Um, but ultimately, I have really become dissatisfied and unhappy and frustrated because I started to pick and choose who I wanted to work with. You know, because at one point there are guys sending in jobs for five and seven thousand dollar roofing jobs, and just anybody can get on the site and create an account. And we have hundreds of people, you know, sending in their orders and you know trying to scale and having struggles with that. And you know, I would take hits publicly from people on social media and everything else that was just like irate with me and calling me everything in the world um, because of a bad experience they had like on a $5,000 roofing job. And I decided that's not worth it, you know, it really isn't. And so I, you know, when we do the boots on the ground, I was just, I was seeing that we couldn't get back with all the people that were on the inbound leads as it was. And so, you know, like we were only able to even get in contact, I only had room for so many people. So I started this thing where, okay, well if there's 100 people, and you can only get you can only get in contact with so many of them as it is. Then I would just only pick and choose like the ones that I chose to work with, like only clients that I vetted personally and met with, and you know they dealt with the right type of projects that I want to that I want to deal with, and uh, and raised my price significantly. You know because we're doing the boots on the ground and with myself involved intimately with those accounts, uh, and then so only started dealing with much less you know volume of people bigger projects, more commercial projects, and and stop taking hits, by the way. <laughs> like I stopped, I still take some, but not like on that level, you know, and um, so, but you know, another, another thing that I've done throughout this, the, this t that time period that I'm describing now is because I wanted to build a brand, I realized that the way to do that was just to give value publicly, like just give, 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 give. Somebody has a question in social media, you know, somewhere, uh, give the answer where a lot of people want to keep it secret, you know, give, give, give. Started a YouTube channel, started the What's Wrong With This Insurance Estimate series, and that just took off. Like, people started contacting me like, hey, how do I do this and how do I do that? And I find myself on the phone like for hours at a time. I love the one I'm with. Uh, you know, I'm on the phone with someone I just, I don't want to go, whether they're paying me or not, I just want to give them my best when I'm on the phone. I'm still like that to a fault. And uh, you know, just, just all the time giving advice, giving free advice, collaborating, meeting up with people, and you know, and made, made some wrong decisions about who I've aligned myself with uh, in public. You know, like on social media, just kind of getting out there and meeting with this guy and that guy, not really knowing anything about them, stepping on toes. And this guy's like, "Why are you with this guy? Why are you with that?" It's really crazy. Most of that stuff. All I was trying to do was be positive and just get out there, build my name up, build the brand, right? Um, and that's what I was doing. And but. But then I discovered problems with that too because the challenge that I saw was there's only one of me and there's only so much time in a day to give that value. And so I'm like, how do I do it? What do I do? You know, I got this YouTube channel, but you don't, you don't really make any money on YouTube. <laughs> like, well, I get a lot of clients from it, but like, you know, the monetization, I didn't even monetize it because it's like, you know, 200 bucks for like 100,000 views, I think is what it is. And I mean, it's just like crazy. You don't really make money. I never uh, had any aspirations of making money on YouTube, but you know, the people coming in, I'm like, you know, there's, there's got to be, there's a big following here and there has to be a way to help more people, right? I mean, like, there has to be a way to, to like, because here's what I mean. So, um, somebody asked my advice and I spent two hours on the phone with them, a lot more than most people would. But what they really need is 30 hours, you know, like something like this training course. They really need to, somebody to drill down. Like my grandfather mentioned he was a minister. He was an evangelist. He'd come into a town, into a church, and get them all fired up about the word, you know, and about the gospel. And, uh, but, but then he would leave, and then that would be the pastor's problem to go in and, you know, to follow up and help those people, people with their lives and, you know, walk with them on a daily basis. Where my grandpa, you know, he would have never did good with that. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of me in a way, in a lot of ways. You know, they really need a lot more drill down training, and, and, and I just didn't see a way of really doing that. And so, you know, and I've priced myself out, you know, like I've, I charge so much for my services that, you know, for the estimating, and there's supplementing companies popping up all the time, that, you know, there's only a small few of the, a, a small percentage of all the hundreds of people that contact me uh, for help that I actually even work with. 
And so that's not good enough, you know? And so I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I, was, I was frustrated. And so for the last couple of years, I have had the vision and the plan to start this virtual online training system. You know, like if you look at our private Facebook group that I started with this, it was started two years ago. Um, the Facebook page, two years ago. The YouTube channel with the insurance restoration training, two years ago. Um, but I just didn't know how to do it. It was so hard. Uh, and you know, and I'll tell you, after this video, as I'm recording this, I had to save this for last because I'm, you know, as I said, you know, you, you probably think I put it in the beginning to get through it right away, but I didn't. I saved it till last because it was the hardest thing to do. So I've already done almost all the filming uh, for the initial release of the training course, and it was like the, one of the most hardest things I've ever done in my life to do that. And and it wasn't the filming that was so hard. This part of it here. It was a lot of the you know processing and editing and uploading and all that other stuff and configuring the site and it's a lot of things I'm still trying to get figured out you know uh, if you're watching this and some of the things aren't quite working please hang with me I've never done this before you know and I'm not working with professionals who do this for me or anything like I'm here in the trenches uh, you know doing hands-on work uh, with with, with uh, help that's limited like I only have one person helping me at this point but I plan to start here and to build it out you know to continue to add and just drill down in all these subjects that I'm starting with but I didn't know how to do it like how to put it all together how, you know what kind of an order and how to give the content what kind of a setting to set it up all as you know I thought I'd do it you know out in the field mostly but and I will do a lot of stuff out in the field and, and the, the segments that are coming up you'll see stuff that was in the field but there's challenges with like wind and things you know so and all the same all the stuff I'm kind of still learning you know but um, but but it's been uh, this is something that's been in the making for a couple years this is huge that I finally got to this point there's still a lot to be done but the reason and I'm gonna close this video up shortly but the reason why I've done this for, there's like a, three main reasons, and I'll quickly go through them, is that all of a sudden I was terrified about one concept that, that, that <laughs> I sort of thought about one day, is that, you know, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow and die, like, what's going to happen to my story? All of this, everything that I've told you. Right, like, and, and, and everything that's going to come out in the course, you know, and the, all the details, all the tactics that I've learned, and the skills, and the experience, and the strategies that I've come up with, and the methods, right? Uh, and the reason for some of those, and they're all built on success, and failure, and blood, sweat, and tears, and pain, and laughter, and joy. Um, but there's so much in there. There's so much in there, right? And so, w what would happen to all that? Like, I haven't taken the time to write a book. I don't know if I could, quite frankly. I probably could if I sat down to do it, but I don't have anything like that. I didn't keep a journal, didn't keep a diary. I didn't take daily notes. I'm not a big note taker. I have notes that I took here, and I'm surprised I was able to even put them together. <laughs> I'm not a big note taker. I'm not, I didn't want to do this training thing. None of it's like on a teleprompter. You know, it's unscripted, baby. <laughs> you know, but I, I just didn't know how to how to do it all, right? And so, but I did finally take the action, you know, and execute on those visions to get it to this point because I realized, you know, like, like I don't have a book. I don't have a way of getting, you know, of that story, all of that is gone if I get hit by a bus. So this is my way, this is my legacy project. I really believe that. I think this is the most important thing I've ever done to date because this is a way for me to get all of those skills out there so that others can use it hopefully for years to come. And I hope that I'm still living. I hope I don't get hit by a bus because I think that this training and the reason why there's a monthly aspect to, to it is because we're gonna keep adding to it and for a lot of, and one reason for that is because things change all the time. The insurance trends, you know, in this industry has changed so drastically in the past 20 years that I've been involved with it. You know, and I, I noticed that when I, after Hurricane Ir, uh, Irma down in Florida, these, these contractors that stuck around, you know, um, that were waiting on the hurricanes back when I was, 
uh, they didn't have any hurricanes. So when, when Irma came, they were like, oh, well, I'm going to have it made because I already know everything and how to do everything insurance-wise because of my experience back in 2005, 2004. And then they found pretty quickly that the whole game has flipped, like the whole script has flipped, you know, the, the, it, the, everything has changed. The, so trends change um, yearly, monthly, and sometimes even weekly, and I'm really looking forward to the group aspect of this in our forums and Facebook thing, um, because, I, because now I feel like I can help people at scale, right? This was to me the answer, you know, like, like getting it out there for the masses, um, and they would pay for it, but I want to keep it, try to keep it reasonable as compared to a lot of things I've seen. Um, but to, to support it, and I really honestly want to be spending the majority of my time doing this. I'm still going to do the estimating and consulting and inspecting so that I can remain relevant to do a better job of doing this. But that, that was one reason why, why I decided to create this and actually finally took action executing and doing it. But another reason was because I'm really seeing a lack of industry, industry training. Um, there is a ton of industry training, don't get me wrong, compared to where I was when I was first getting started out. It was one of the reasons for my early demise. Like, I didn't have any in this industry who could help me you know I, I didn't have anybody I looked at and I saw like I thought I was the leader I thought I was a trailblazer in a lot, of, a lot of ways I was a trailblazer but I thought I was a hot shot knew everything there was nothing you could teach me boy was I so 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 wrong in hindsight looking back as a 40 year old man now I wish that I had you know somebody like some of the leaders you see there that are in the industry now we didn't have the the social media really aspect of it so there there wasn't that connection to connect everybody together and events and conferences and things to learn so don't get me wrong there's so much better stuff out there now you know than there was but i see a lot of people who are who are not giving accurate information, uh, like in some of the, some of the places in social media, I see people asking for help. Somebody gives them an answer, but it's not the wrong answer. In fact, I see like nine, ten out of the twenty answers in there are wrong. It's like the blind leading the blind, and I'm not saying everybody. I'm saying you know there the majority of people I see out there are doing things that are that are they think are the right ways to do it or the best ways or whatever. Um, but they're they're not and so and they don't know but I, I think I, I've learned that by dealing with like maybe hundreds of thousands of you know insurance claims and insurance projects through the years and having those years and having that that young ambition uh, that was uneducated and not, thinking I was the best in the world but it was really just gonna fall on my face I want I think if you have the right training if you're a younger guy listen to this or gal I think if you have the right training, um, then you could get where I got that took me 20 years in just a couple of years, if even that. You know, well, you're gonna have to put in a couple of years to have this sheer experience, because uh, experience is does count for so much. The doing aspect of it, it's most of it, you know. But but I think the young, um, gen the younger generations are going to come in here and kick our tails and show us how it's done. I really believe that. I think there's more room for people in this industry to get into the industry. Um, but, but that you know, was another um, reason why I decided to create this. And so listen, I don't think that uh, by any, of this, any stretch of the imagination that I deserve your support and um, your confidence in me to this point. Um, but I'm so overwhelmed and grateful and blessed by anybody that's watching this right now because it means that you've supported me and believed in me. And I, I hope now that I've given you some of my story, there's so much more to it, um, that you still do, you know? And if you don't, then uh, I'm sorry, but I'm me and I'm gonna give you me. And so that's what this training course is, is I'm, I'm throwing myself entirely into it. I'm going all in. I'm giving you every single thing that I've got. And I'm not going to be able to do that, by the way, just in the initial release. Like, I'm, it's going to take a long time to give you everything I got. But every scenario I can think of, I want to put it into some you know, consumable form uh, that you can use that will better your life, better your business, better your family. 
and better your security and better your time management and contr contr your control of time and better your freedom. And I hope that you get immense value from this. And so, again, thank you for everything. I love you. God bless you. And I hope that uh, you pay close attention to everything you're getting ready to learn. Thanks a lot. So here you go. I laid it out there. Welcome to IES Certified for Practitioners. Mm -hmm.